So I wasn't even going to make this video because I went to thrift stores the other day and as always I'm looking for items that I can flip online for a profit. And honestly I didn't find a whole lot. The quantity wasn't there. There wasn't a lot of content. But then I got home and did some research and I realized that one of the items that I found may actually be a part of history. It's kind of depressing when you walk into a thrift store and see pricing like this. 100 bucks for this vacuum cleaner. Looked it up on eBay and there's one for sale for $65. Uh, I mean, I guess you could part it out. There's another one for $60. It's just kind of depressing. Especially when I found a remote control car right down there the other day for $4.99 that I sold for $150. But uh, I'm going to keep looking. Got a little waffle iron here, four bucks. Maybe we'll find something. So I've been through everything, been through the clothes, the hard goods. I did find this thing. It's not a telescope. I'll tell you about it in a minute. I'm going to go check out the shoes and then I'll uh, go over this thing when I get to the car. All right, so I took a chance on this thing and uh, it's not like my death pile is overflowing because I haven't bought anything in quite some time, but it's a spotting scope. It's made for like target practice or deer hunting when you're uh, shooting something from a long way away. It's made by this company called C. Adler or Seedler. I'm not real sure, but I looked up that name and scope on eBay and there was like five listed and two or three had sold. The ones that sold sold for well over a hundred bucks and there's no spotting scope. So those were just regular rifle scopes. So I really don't know. But for four bucks, I figured I'd take a chance. It's on this cool vintage Bushnell tripod. Uh, that actually may be usable for me. I don't know. But four bucks, took a chance, and now I'm at the uh, Salvation Army. So this guy just put out this racket clothes. What are the chances there's something good on that? It's interesting. Look through, uh, look through the whole rack, and most of it's kind of bread and butter stuff like Arnold Palmer polo shirts. But this would have been really good, Filson CC Filson. But unfortunately, it is stained pretty bad, so I'm gonna have to leave it behind. Y'all, you gotta check this out. This is nuts. All right, this could be Yale, could be anything, honestly. But it's in decent condition, and it's got to be from like the 50s. Check out that tag. Stadium 100% wool shaker sweater company. That's got to be good. And I think it's going to be like $3.99. That's got to be good. Here's some more really old stuff. Check this out. Doron by Barden. I looked it up and it uh, looks like it is from the 50s or 60s. Doesn't really sell well though. And then this vintage Kmart permanent press. I've never had good luck with those either, but definitely old. The guy just put out another new rack. Let's check it out. So that may have paid off. Check this out. Vintage liquid blue cat suck cycle repair. Check out the back. How cool is that? And then, got the 1994 Dale Earnhardt. Pink t shirts here are going to be $2.99. That's a double X made in the USA. That's awesome. Alright, so this is nuts. I absolutely love this shirt. No tag, but check that out. The Wolf Habitat 92. Yeah, that's awesome. Double sided. Alright, so today was Vantage Day at the Salvation Army. Got the Cat Suck Cycle Repair shirt on the liquid blue tag made in the USA. I don't think any of these t shirts are like grails or anything. But uh, I can't pass them up for three bucks. I mean, look at that logo, or excuse me, graphic on the back. That is crazy. I love that. And then the wolf print, double sided, Habitat 92. Missing a tag, but otherwise in good condition. Got the wolf, the same graphic on both sides. Bright, bright colors. How cool is that? I mean, it looks like it's straight out of Arizona. Then we got the Dale Earnhardt that's on the Nutmeg, double XL, made in the USA. Should be from, I'm guessing, 94, 95 sports image. Pretty cool, nothing on the back. And then this thing, I definitely bought myself some research. Gotta do some research on this thing. My first inclination is that it's Yale and it's from like 50s based on that tag. I have no idea what it's gonna sell for, if it'll even sell at all, but can you pass that up? I paid $15 for all four of these items. Not too bad. I'll do some research on this and I'll let you know what I find out at the end of the video. So I didn't find anything at the last Goodwill, so I'm at another one, but uh, check out the Bose system that they had at the last Goodwill. 
looked at $600. That might be the highest priced single item that I've ever seen at a Goodwill. Hopefully there's uh, nothing like that here. Yeah, 600 bucks for that Bose system at that Goodwill. Kind of crazy. But that also kind of represents how the rest of my day went because I went to like three or four more different thrift stores and didn't find a single thing. But I do want to go over with you what I did find. First up is this C. Adler spotting scope, and I couldn't find this thing anywhere. I did a bunch of Googling, couldn't find it anywhere except for where it was mentioned in a hunting forum one time, a long time ago. So I have no idea of the value. I listed it for like $115. There are a few watchers on it, but it may take forever to sell if it ever does. But you'll see that I separated the tripod from the spotting scope. That's because there are actually comps on the tripod. Looks like it sells for around $40, $45. So for my $4 investment, I think I'm going to be okay. All right, so the spotting scope is definitely a unique find, but this is what I really want to talk about. I went down a deep rabbit hole with this thing, and what I found was pretty interesting. The first thing I did was actually Google the tag, the Stadium Shaker Sweater Company, and I added Yale to it because I felt like that was the Yale logo. And honestly, I only really got two results. One was an Instagram post, and they had it listed as an antique Yale sweater, and one was a Worthport auction where they had it listed as a 1940s Yale sweater. So I did some more research on the company and it looks like they were actually around from like the 1930s to like 1970. So that kind of didn't really narrow down the time period either. So then I actually started digging into Yale itself a little bit further and actually found a photo from 1916 where some guys were pretty much wearing the same sweater. But as I told you, that company wasn't around for that long. So I honestly think this is a sweater from the 1940s to the 1950s. The reason I say that, they actually changed their logo sometime around 1960 from the big Y to the spell out. So I honestly think this sweater is from around 1940s, 1950s, somewhere in that era. And it's in remarkably good condition. I only found one hole in it and it's right here on the sleeve and it's actually 100% wool, which is like a moth buffet. So for it only to have one hole, I'm pretty happy about that. That's not all because I did even more research because I thought maybe somebody famous actually wore this sweater. And I tried to figure out who was around during the 40s and 50s that I had heard of that it could have actually worn it. And well, here's what I found out. First up, former president Gerald Ford actually graduated in 1941. Incidentally, he was the head coach of the junior varsity football team and also worked as a model. Kind of interesting. And then there was George H.W. Bush. He graduated in 1948. And then Paul Newman, famous movie star and salad dressing guy, actually graduated in 1954. But my absolute favorite was Christopher Lloyd. He was there from 1956 to 1961 and he actually could have worn this sweater too. Scott. All right, I'll admit, none of these people probably actually wore this sweater, but it's still pretty cool to think about. But I kept going. I kept doing more research because I wanted to figure out the value of this thing. What is it worth? What can I list it for on eBay? And you guys saw there weren't very many results. So I actually reached out to Reunion Vintage. That's the Instagram post that I had found earlier and asked them what they sold theirs for. They said from what they could remember from about a year ago, they sold it for around 200 bucks. So that's what I currently have it listed for on eBay. And there's a ton of watchers. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully my $5.99 will turn into 200 bucks. But either way, I think it's pretty cool. I found a piece of history. And now it's your turn if you don't mind. Drop a comment down below and let me know what your best thrift find ever was. Maybe it was a piece of history. Maybe it was super rare or something really valuable. Leave me a comment down below and let me know. I'm genuinely interested. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.